Welcome back to the Kernel Talk channel. In this episode about materials used in watchmaking, I will talk about gold. Stay tuned. Okay, so one thing to keep in mind when talking about gold in watches is that it is used basically for aesthetical reasons and to bring uh, the watch closest to a jewelry state status. Okay, uh, there is no very special technical advantages of using gold on watches. Of course, there are few advantages, but this is not the main point. Uh, and that's why gold is used since ever to make watch cases and bracelets. One technical advantage of using gold on watches is that gold is a very stable metal, which means that it's very resistant to corrosion. It's almost impossible to, to get corrosion in normal use in a normal environment. And it's also not allergenic, which means that it doesn't cause allergy in contact with the skin. The problem with gold is that pure gold is a very soft metal. Uh, in technical terms, it's a, it's a very ductile material, which means that it can bend and stretch very easily. And it also means that it's, uh, it doesn't have hardness enough to make any decent mechanical part with that. Uh, for you to have an idea, pure gold have a hardness of 45 vikers, which is five times less than stainless steel, which is already a not very hard material. That's why the gold used in watches is usually used in a form of an alloy, which means that it's a, it's a, it's a mixture of other metals with the pure gold to make it more resistant to mechanical um, forces and to make it more usable, literally. As you probably know, the gold purity is measured in carats, being 24 carats, uh, the equivalent of practically pure gold. It means 999.9 parts of pure gold to a thousand parts of material. This is basically pure gold. And of course, this also means that any gold alloy have less than 24 carats. For example, the most common gold alloy used in watches is the 18 carat. 18 carat means 75% of pure gold or 750 parts of pure gold for every thousand parts of material. Usually that other 25% of material is composed by a different uh, metals, usually precious metals as well. For example, one classic 18 karat uh, alloy is composed of 12.5% of silver and another 12.5% of copper. This is the classic 18 karat alloy. And while the, the silver more or less dissolves the, the yellow color of the gold and brings the color to a, to a more whitish hue, uh, the copper compensates this, bringing it back to a yellow. So it makes uh, the yellow the closest hue of the pure gold. But of course, you can use a different, um, different rates of materials. For example, another very common is 16% of silver and 9% of copper, which gives a less yellowish hue to the, to the gold appearance. Another very common colors of gold used in watches is the white gold and the rose gold. The white gold, for example, is achieved by using very white metals uh, added to the alloy. Uh, you can use even the, the, that remaining 25% can be pure platinum or even pure palladium, 
which is very a very whitish uh, metal, with, which brings the color to a, an almost white color to the gold. Likewise, you can use copper to bring the color to a more reddish hue. For example, the rose gold use anything between 18 to 22 percent of copper on the alloy with the remaining of silver or other whitish material. You can actually have different colors to gold like uh, a greenish or bluish hue uh, adding iron to the to the alloy but it's uh, it's very rare i actually never saw this used in, in watches it's more for jewelry so anyway even uh, under a form of an alloy the 18 karat gold is still softer than stainless steel which makes the a gold watch more susceptible to scratches and dents and this is uh, this is the downside of a, of a, of a gold watch the 18 karat gold usually have a, a Vickers hardness of 130 to 160. Uh, for comparison, the stainless steel is around 220 to 140 Vickers. So it's it's way softer than stainless steel. Another thing is that gold is very is a very heavy metal. Pure gold have a density of 19.3 grams per cubic centimeters while uh, the 18 karat gold have around 15.5 which is still the double of the stainless steel which have around 7.8 grams per cubic centimeter this basically means that a uh, uh, 18 karat gold watch is twice as heavy as a uh, stainless steel counterpart one thing that you probably already saw in catalogs is the mention, for example, like gold 3N or gold 4N. Uh, this is the color of the gold. This is a Swiss convention about the, um, uh, the color of the gold in a scale that goes from 1N to 5N. Being 1N, the, the whitish one is not exactly white gold, but is the, the clearer yellow hue. 2N is a very light yellow, 3N is the more consistent yellow closest to the pure gold color, 4N is rose gold and 5N is red gold. One interesting thing about white gold is that the white gold is not exactly, is not perfectly white, is not as white or as clear or as shiny as stainless steel. Uh, the white gold in it's still slightly yellowish uh, even even if you use the the whitish metals to compose the the, the alloy it still have a very light yellow hue um, there are some exceptions for example rolex have a white gold that is really 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 white but it's not usual, okay? The usual thing is to use uh, rhodium plating over the white gold to give it um, as white as possible hue. And also uh, the rhodium plating uh, makes the gold slightly more scratch resistant. Uh, so this is very common to use. Uh, the problem is that then you have to, when you have to polish a white gold, uh, watch that have the rhodium plating is that you have to when you polish it you remove the the plating and you have to reapply afterwards which of course makes uh, the polishing of white gold slightly more expensive another thing is that the use of gold in watch cases is determined by a swiss law um, this is a copy of the of this law uh, which is specific for the the gold and other uh, precious metals under the control of the swiss government it's not a very very complex uh, law but it, it it have a lot of details on what you can do and what you can't uh, and what kind of of responsibility and 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 controls you have to go through when you are making an object with metal, with precious metals 
in Switzerland. So the law talks about uh, articles made of gold, silver, platinum, and palladium. Uh, for example, I never saw a watch entirely made of palladium, and silver is is very is really not used anymore. Uh, you will find more vintage watches made of silver. Uh, so basically, what you use today is gold and platinum. For example, the law uh, defines the the fineness of gold you can use. For example, the 750, which is the 18 carat, as well as the 585, which is 14 carat, and the 375, which is 9 carat. I, uh, basically, they don't make watches uh, in 9 carat, uh, but probably they use it for technical parts like tubes and screws. And the, the 14 carat is more common on older watches that were destined to the U.S. market. So it, it's not rare to find vintage watches in U.S. that are made of 14K gold because there, were, there was a law in the United States. I'm not, I don't know exactly what are the, the, the specifics of this, but I know that back in the past it was forbidden to import 18 karat gold to United States. So uh, the, the, the Swiss companies started making watches in 14 karat gold to export to the US market. So one thing that the law specifies is what, what are the hallmarks that you have to use when making a watch made of gold. For example, in this picture here, what you see is um, hallmarks apply it to an Audemars Piguet rose gold case. What you see in the top of the image is what they call the responsibility hallmark. This is a, a hallmark that the manufacturer of the, the, the article have to put in the article to guarantee that they have they are entirely according to the law in terms of purity and the origins of this 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 metal not every brand have their own their own hallmark sometimes they they make an association and use a single hallmark for all the brands in this under this association and this responsibility is given uh, it's, it's a right given Uh, from the Swiss government and you have to renew this this allowance to produce uh, objects in precious metals. In this other picture what you see is uh, is the the buckle from the the, the strap and it have uh, four markings. The one on the on the on the left is the responsibility hallmark. hallmark. On the right, you see the 750, which means the purity of the gold, which means it's uh, 18 karat gold. And the very small hallmarks you see in the middle is uh, a hallmark that is used internationally. So it's uh, for it, it's accepted in all uh, countries. Uh, this hallmark, which is a it's a scale with the 750 uh, inside. It can be other numbers depending on the purity of the material. And the most important hallmark, which is uh, the Swiss government hallmark, is the head of the Saint Bernard dog. The Saint Bernard head is the, the hallmark used since 1995 for all precious metals used in Switzerland. So it doesn't matter if it's if it's gold or platinum or it doesn't matter which carrot you you use, it's uh, all the same hallmark, which is this Saint Bernard dog head. This hallmark is obligatory to the watch cases. Uh, if the case is made of different materials, mix it like big color cases, which uses steel and gold this is optional and it's also optional in other parts like uh, clasps or bracelets in this case it's a it's a buckle from the strap it's optional but it's there anyway but on the cases it 
it is obligatory. And before 1995, they, they had different uh, hallmarks depending on the material and depending on the carrot. What you see uh, in the screen right now, it's, uh, it's the old, the old uh, standards for hallmarks. And one very common is the 18 gold carrot, which is the head of the Helvetia. And also the squirrel for 14 carat gold. And also you see the, the old uh, hallmark for platinum, or for example, the sterling silver, which is the canard. One thing that the law specifies, for example, is that it's allowed to use some parts of the case that are not made of the same overall material. For example, a 18 karat gold case can use tubes or screws or other attachments of different materials. It can be either a different, completely different metal or a different uh, carrot. So for example, tubes can be made of a different uh, kind of gold instead of 18K, they can use 14K because it can, you can add uh, other metals to the, to, the, to the alloy to make it more resistant to the, to the screwing of the crown, for example. Another common thing is that sometimes when a watch is going through maintenance and you have to exchange a screw or a tube in the case, Sometimes the customer may ask, oh, wh why it's so expensive? Because why the, the screws and tubes, that are very simple parts, why they have to be made of gold? Uh, and why not steel or something else? There is a technical reason for that. The reason is that since gold is a very stable material, uh, it also means that it's, it's a material that is very hard to lose ions. And when in contact with other metals that are not as uh, resistant or not as stable, it have a, a tendency to steal ions from that other material. Uh, so what happens, it's a, it's a chemical reaction that, for example, if you put a stainless steel against a um, gold case, over time, uh, this stainless steel screw can oxidize and corrode completely even even though it's stainless steel because the the gold will start to steal ions from from that stainless steel so that's why all kinds of attachments to gold cases are usually gold as well or maybe other material like titanium okay so more recently they started using titanium uh, in some parts against gold cases. And basically, that's it. I hope you like it. I hope you learned something new from this video. Don't forget to give your thumbs up, tell your friends to subscribe and join the channel, and keep watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.